So I saw Joker yesterday. Get ready for my spoiler for review. Welcome to the newest episode of SDW. Super Dario World! It's -a me, Dario! Woohoo! All right, before I get into that, let me just talk about something real quick. Big news came down today. Big news in the video game world. Basically, they announced that the, the PS5 will be released on holiday 2020. They give a whole bunch of specs, but I don't want to really get into that until, you know, it gets closer to that. It's because some of the things they're not really confirmed yet. I remember they did that before. So basically, PlayStation 5 release day 2020, which means that we will be getting a bunch of new video game news pretty soon well and by pretty soon i mean throughout the next year because th for some reason they want to get you ready for the next holiday season i guess it's a marketing thing i don't know I i'd rather just wait for the for when you can actually show me something because they didn't even show a picture or anything so we'll see we'll see but big news came down today i had to talk about it also let me give you a quick reminder that you can listen to the podcast in the iHeartRadio radio app just type in the show presents super dire world you'll find it right there or you can find it on itunes soundcloud and youtube as Super Die World podcast. If you want to listen to my Spanish podcast, my first episode, I aired it on Saturday. You can find it again, iTunes, SoundCloud, YouTube, Super Die World podcast. I'm still working on it, getting its own channel. It still needs to be approved. It's a pain and it's going to take a minute. All right. It's going to take a minute. Also, I thought a little bit more about the GoFundMe thing for uh, me finally getting a computer that won't, will, that will make me not rip my, my hairs out. I'm Probably not going to go in that direction because apparently GoFundMe takes money from you and stuff. I don't know. I might put up my Venmo here or something. See if <laughs> anybody wants to donate there. I don't think it's as, it will be as successful, but it worked for Carson King. So who knows? Who knows? And <laughs> anyway, I still need to see how much it would be because you need to put up like a, something. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do, but uh, I will probably do something, you know? Just guess. Why not? Anyway, any comments, quotes, suggestions, you can find me at Dario the Show on Instagram. This is a way for you to find me. I'm slowly catching up on all the messages that I owe. I've had a busy few weeks. And actually, this one's going to be kind of short because I have a busy, busy day today. After I finish up the podcast, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skedaddle. I'm going to go over. Well, I got to go home to feed my reptiles. And then I'm going to go to Sky's house to help her with her move. Finish up last day of the move. So that should be fun. After that, then I'm going to go work at the restaurant. So, busy day for me. I work at the radio station. I work at the podcast. I work at the Sky's house. And then I'm working at the restaurant. I may die. <laughs> I Honestly, this one might not even have video. I'm recording a video, but I might not even have time to load it. You might have to wait for tomorrow. Who knows? Hopefully not. I, I'm trying to get on a schedule here. Anyway, so, Joker. Juan Ke Joaquin Phoenix's Joker. Todd Phillips' Joker. What do I think overall... As always, I like to answer the question, is it worth your money? So you're going to go to the movie theater, you're going to spend, what, 12, 13 bucks if you bring a date. It's almost 20, so it's over 20. And plus, you, you might get popcorn, you might get sodas or anything. Uh, is it worth your money? The answer is yes. I do think it's worth your money. And again, this is spoiler free, by the way, spoiler free. And I don't want to get too deep into it. I still haven't completely processed the movie. It is really, really well made. I m noticed one or two mistakes one was hysterical. There's a scene where there's actually like the lamps. <laughs> they they have a C stand with lamps there that, that shouldn't be there. So I, I uh, damn it, super computer. I thought that was hysterical. It, I guess it could be passed off as lights from that location, but no, th these were very clearly film, <laughs> film lighting. It was film lighting, and I found that hysterical. Most people won't probably care. And uh, for those of you who are wondering, it's the scene where he's trying to sneak into the theater <laughs> that you could see the light. It, it, it's so blatant. I can't. I. The thing is, it's so blatant that you have to believe that it was meant to be a part of the set design. It, there's no way that it, something that blatant just could have snuck by. You didn't really have to. You didn't need it there. Then somebody had to have seen it. I don't know. The point is, it could have not have been a mistake. But I think it was a mistake and it was pretty funny. Anyway, so I noticed my two flaws like that. But overall, the movie's really good. The performance, honestly, this is what everybody thinks about or everybody cares. How is 
Joaquin Phoenix's Joker. And first off, it's very different. Very different from all the other ones. You got the gangster, which is uh, Jack Nicholson. You got the anarchist, who is um, who is uh, Heath Ledger. Then you had the weird dude from 30 Seconds to Mars, who's Jared Leto, who is what? The the lover? I don't even know, because cause he's not really a, a gangster. He's, he's, he's really, he, he sucks. All right? No, he's a... Uh, he, he's the psycho from Borderlands who's a, who's a mega fan of the Joker. That's who he is. And he sucked. And then you got Joaquin Phoenix. He's very different. Very different type of performance. Very different type of character. Although kind of rooted in the same area. Now, first off, before I get into that, I want to talk about the setting as a whole. Gotham City. This is not a comic book movie. But... The comic book elements in the movie make the setting a lot more easier to digest. For example, when they talk about the Wayne family, you understand that they're talking about rich people. You understand you're talking about the 1%, stuff like that. So when they talk about Commissioner Gordon, you're like, oh, that's a fun little throwback. So it, it does have, it's set in Gotham City. And so that that makes certain things a lot, again, more more digestible, easier to understand, easier to, easier to digest, and they don't have to get into it too deep. So, the all right, I'll I'll go, I'll go into the city stuff later because I have I have issues with it a bit. But Joaquin Phoenix, I mentioned this before, and after seeing the movie, I think Joaquin Phoenix might be the best working actor in Hollywood right now. He might be the best working actor. I still think that Daniel Day Lewis is the best actor. I see he's a better actor, but he's retired, so. Current best working actor in Hollywood is Joaquin Phoenix. Dude knocks it out of the park. And his performance is so different than than Heath Ledger's, because honestly, that's that's the best one. So it's so different. And because uh, this is a Joker that has a lot of feelings, and he's very disturbed. Heath Ledger's Joker, you get to see him on the other side of stuff. This is before he goes through the thresh- the threshold. So once he's on the other side and he doesn't care and he's free from all that stuff, that's Heath Ledger's Joker. This one, it's before he goes through that threshold. And you there's a lot of suffering here. So it's it's very interesting to see. And this is I don't think this is a spoiler. And actually I'm pretty sure it's not a spoiler, but his laugh. And they explained it pretty quickly. His laugh, you can actually see him suffer with his laugh. Like to me, the 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 thing that was most impressive about Joaquin Phoenix's performance is the laugh because you could see him suffering with it it's very very good uh if you've seen the movie I think you understand what I'm saying if you haven't it'll make sense when you, once you see it there's there's a certain disturbance in it and he doesn't imagine you're getting um uh, well I guess I can explain this he gets inappropriate fits of laughing in inappropriate situation and you can see him trying to stop like he doesn't want to laugh he really doesn't want to laugh and you can see him suffering with it, but he can't stop. That is nuts. Imagine, imagine trying to do it. Just try that right now. Try it. I'll give you what? I'll give you ten seconds. Ten seconds. There. It was hard, right? It's really hard to do. It, trying it, trying to laugh convincingly, but at the same time, trying desperately not to laugh. It's really hard. Joaquin Phoenix. Two thumbs up. Amazing. You get the title right now. Best working actor in Hollywood. My favorite performance so far this year. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Very different. Now, I need to, I need, uh, this is how, what I just told Eddie. Cause he, he said that saying that it's, uh, that it's very different is a cop out because that's what he said. <laughs> so I can't steal his, his critique. My critique is this I like Heath Ledger's Joker better. Because he's wilder, you more unpredictable yet planned, and uh, no remorse whatsoever, no feelings either. This one, however, I think is a better performance. So even though I like one better, this one overall, I have to say it's a better performance. Because if it's if it's difficult to play a character who's completely unhinged, and he did, he created that. He made everybody everybody think that now that's what the Joker should be. That's the, that's the standard for the Joker. Joaquin Phoenix grabbed that and he he put him in a very suffering type of role. It, 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 the movie's very rough. It's very rough. It's very heavy. And uh, 
again, going going off of Eddie's critique, er, Eddie was worried that like, oh, do you think this could be kind of like a manifesto for people with with mental illness and all that stuff? And that was a lot of the controversy with this film. I, I talked about it in a previous video. There's a lot of controversy like, oh, well, now people might be going crazy. They might take this as a sign. They might be like insult culture, all this stuff. I took it in a completely different direction. When I was seeing this movie, what I, I wasn't thinking like, wow, now crazy people will think it's cool and, and to be crazy. To me, it was like, we really, really, really need to be kinder to these people, right? People with mental issues, sometimes all you need is a hug. <laughs> Sometimes, and many places, like, dude, just give the guy a hug. Seriously. <laughs> I'm telling you, this movie is about society breaking a man, the world breaking a man, every single thing going wrong and breaking them. It's a very heavy film to see, and it's a very slow burn, which makes it even more disturbing. It's very slow, very well made, very interesting, and you can slowly see the monster taking over the man. Very, 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 very slowly. The man desperately trying to stay. Uh, in control, but the monster taking over. It's beautiful to see. It's like the the thing, it, watching the Joker is like, I don't know, it, it's the same reason we get mesmerized by staring at a flame. Have you ever just been camping and you just look at a flame and you're just mesmerized and you don't really know why? You're just watching a raw destructive power in action. It, or, or, I don't know, when a volcano erupts that we just can't help but just stay there and wonder, like, oh my God, like this is this is a force of nature. This is destruction in its purest form. And I talked about men and destruction before. I may talk about it again at some point, but it's something that it's mesmerizing and it's beautiful. It's mesmerizing. And it's beautiful to see. And in this movie, you, you understand here's the, it, that's the thing. It makes you understand why a man could be driven to that point, why the monster might be able to co- overcome, why you might be broken and why a lot of things in society are kind of messed up for people with mental issues. Now, again, to me, the way that I saw it is we we need to be kinder to these people, honestly. Sure, there's a, I remember I, I saw that there was a lot of critique. I talked about this during the video games uh, where there's a lot of controversy and they wanted to make it like a mental gaming, a, a mental disorder and stuff like that. And to me, it's like you, you can't put people with mental disorder all in the same category because there's different type of mental disorders and they react very differently. So if this person has one type of mental disorder... Sometimes they what they the, the help that they need or the reactions is very different than somebody that has something that's even similar. And it's it's unfair to one to talk about them the same way they would you would talk about the other cuz some of these people are really nice. They're really kind and they're actually they're actively trying to be better. They're trying to deal with their issues. They want to get their family back. And honestly, a lot of it's not their fault. People with mental, it's not their fault. If your brain is betraying you, it's not your fault. You, some, it could be trauma. It could be a myriad of things. It could be just plain bad luck. So I took it in that direction. Eddie took it in the other one. But then again, I guess it all depends on perspective. I've, I've dealt with a lot more mental issues than he has. So I get that for him is scary. For me, it's more like, no, we, we just need to be kinder. Now, my, I have one big critique of the movie. And to me, this is like, it's only failure. It's only real failure overall. And that's, I never really felt, okay, uh, this is not a spoiler, or at least I don't think it's a spoiler, but a part of the plot of the movie is that the people of Gotham are very upset. For very, It's actually a very interesting critique of New York City and Los Angeles. And from the very beginning of the movie, they start telling you that people are upset because there's a garbage strike and there's a, there's issue with within the classes and stuff like that. It's it's an interesting critique of certain cities and of certain people. I won't get into it too deep, but definitely a classes critique. Definitely uh, a critique about Los Angeles, New York. But I uh, I I don't know if it's a fair critique or not because the movie is a hundred percent about the Joker from his pr- perspective. You know what? That's the lie. It's ninety nine percent. He, the Joker is in every single scene except for two. There's two scenes where he's not present present, or he's not a part of that particular scene. So everything else is, it's all his perspective. You would, a part of you wants them, oh, we should follow that character, see what's up. But no, they, they keep you locked into the Joker just so that you see some things from his perspective. And sometimes you're even in his head and you don't even realize it. So I do understand that this critique 
may not be fair because it might have been intended that way. But here it is. My issue is that you don't really feel the people getting desperate. Now, that if you've seen the trailer, you've seen points uh, where the people are kind of going crazy. I, I would have liked a little bit of a buildup. Uh, they show you, they tell you certain things, but you don't really feel it. You don't feel the people getting angrier. You know, Les Miserables, you can feel the people. They're hungry. They're, they're starving. They're, you, you, here, and it could have been easy. People just, they're tired of living in trash. They're rats. And it could have been simple comments. The problem is that the Joker sometimes is just walking around having a nice conversation with somebody or, or just walking around in silence. Little things like, oh, fucking rats or something, or, or a little comment, something. A little thing could have gone a long way, and just slowly you could tell that there's anger, that, that the ambiance is really, it's, it's anger. However, again, this is all part of the Joker's perspective, so it could have just been what he's hearing, and he doesn't really care about that stuff, so he's got blinders on. So I'm not sure if it's fair. As a personal preference, I would have liked a little bit more of a buildup instead of just telling me, and then it's just started happening. I would have liked to have seen it more. I would have liked to have seen the, the desperation of the people, a little bit more of the hunger, them wanting to pretty much like to eat the city alive. So overall, the movie, great, great. Two thumbs up. Loved it. It's a 9 out of 10 for me. Um, maybe 9.5. The best part of it is Joaquin Phoenix's performance. Knocked it out of the park. Uh, De Niro is actually pretty enjoyable too. He's really good. His character is super interesting. And uh, the only knock that I have on it is that they should have done a better job with the world building. Just a little bit. They, they kind of got... A little bit too comfy in the, oh, it's Gotham City. People already know it. Build it up a little more. Just a little bit more. You you took advantage of the things that you could, and it was well. But just a little bit more would have been helpful in the build up. And that's it. Overall, highly recommended. Highly enjoyable film. Uh, a must see. A must see. Uh, is it my favorite film of the year so far? Maybe. I have to think about it. That's 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 a hard think. I haven't really seen that many films this year, but I think at least in the geek community, yeah, it's been my favorite one so far. So overall, great movie. Again, highly recommended. Any comments, questions, or suggestions, you can always find me at Dario the Show. I will try to... It's 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 early enough. I will try to do the video and load it up later today, so look forward to that. As always, thank you for listening, and I'll see you again tomorrow. 